Tank ammunition is a pretty simple topic that I often see people get confused over, so I thought I could make a short video explaining how each ammo type works. Ammo has evolved quite a bit over the past century or so, and you would be surprised at how many variations there are. Anyway, let's get into it. First are conventional solid AP shells. The base version of this is basically just a giant slug or bullet. These were made from a steel alloy, and typically weren't great at dealing with angled armor. This is where capped ammunition, or APC, comes into play. To help penetrate angled armor, AP could be fitted with a blunt nose cap. This nose cap was typically softer than the shell itself, and helped to normalize the shell against the plate. Normalization reduces the effective angle of the armor, increasing penetrative capability, and reducing the chance of a ricochet. Obviously, this nose cap isn't the most aerodynamic, so something called a ballistic cap was developed. As the name implies, this cap enhances the ballistic qualities of the shell, by acting as a sort of windshield for the blunt cap beneath it. Shells with a ballistic cap have BC attached to the initialization. Once a solid AP shell penetrates, it relies on metal fragments from the armor in the shell, otherwise known as spall, to either hurt the crew or damage critical components. In order to increase the damage potential of an AP shell, they could be loaded with an explosive charge and an impact fuse. This type of shell was called APHE, Armor Piercing High Explosive. The trade-off for the added damage was that the shell's penetrative capability was slightly diminished. There's a common misconception that the fragmentation from such a shell would radiate hours in a sphere, but this is not the case. The momentum from the shell carries the fragmentation forward in a cone shape. In actual combat, it was found that APHE did not significantly increase the amount of damage being dealt. Next are chemical effect shells, which rely solely on explosives. The first and most obvious is high explosive, or HE. High explosive is almost purely an anti-infantry round, though against slightly armored vehicles it can be very effective. High explosive rounds can also be fit with proximity or programmable fuses, for airburst capability against entrenched targets or helicopters. Then there's high explosive anti-tank. These shells use a shape charge warhead, typically with a copper lining, to penetrate enemy armor. Contrary to popular belief, heat shells do not use a plasma jet to melt through armor. While it is a chemical warhead, the penetrative effect is still kinetic. The shape charge, once detonated, creates a jet of plasticized copper which moves at incredible speed, around 10 kilometers per second. This jet penetrates the armor, creating spall and intense heat. Some newer heat rounds are designed to be multi-purpose, having a programmable fuse that can be used against fortifications, light to medium armored vehicles, and helicopters. Following heat is high explosive squash head, or HESH. This spreads a plastic explosive over the armor plate when it makes contact. The explosive spreads itself out before detonating, which creates a lot of internal spall. Now onto subcaliber munitions. The first of this type was armor piercing composite rigid, also known as APCR or HVAP. This type of shell had a full caliber body, which housed the core of highly dense material, usually tungsten. They also had a ballistic cap for increased accuracy and velocity. On contact with an armored plate, the outer body would give way, but the tungsten core would continue traveling forward, penetrating the armor. APCR is very effective against flat plates, but suffered against angled ones. APCR is usually only used sparingly, since tungsten was hard to come by in World War II. And finally, there's Armor Piercing Discarding Sabo, or APDS. APDS is somewhat similar to APCR in that it uses a core of highly dense material, though unlike APCR, the quote-unquote body, or Sabo in this case, was discarded upon exiting the barrel, allowing for much higher muzzle velocity. A later improvement, Armor Piercing Discarding Sabo Fin Stabilized, or APFSDS, has become the standard anti-tank round on modern vehicles. APFSDS has several subtypes, including segmented and composite tipped rounds, which are designed to defeat explosive reactive armor. That pretty much wraps it up. I know that this is very simplified, but I hope you learned something regardless. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.